In August of 2016, an ancient footprint of gigantic proportions was discovered by a group of photographers. It was found within a place known as Pinyan Village in Guizhou, a southwestern province of China. Ever since the discovery, numerous expeditions have been made to the footprint, and also, predictably, the many mainstream denials of its possibility of being a real footprint began and have since continued. Simply dismissed as a coincidental depression in the stone made by erosion. It must be noted, however, that this argument could indeed be more warmly welcomed if it weren't for the multiple other, what could be seen as collection of prints that have now been found and documented around Earth, many of which we have indeed shared in the past. The footprint is said to be 57 centimeters long and 20 centimeters wide at its widest point, with a maximum depth of 3 centimeters. Found indeed within fossilized rock, it is, however, lacking an accurate carbon dating, but most certainly originates from the prehistoric era. At 57 centimeters long, it is nearly three times the size of the normal modern man's foot, giving its owner an estimated height of 18 feet tall. According to some of the original reports, a supposed article regarding the footprint gave a bare-bones description of the discovery. However, according to Snoops.com, and indeed Logic, this account can be proven false, as the print's existence would have almost certainly been exposed by the photographers themselves. It is something which we find highly compelling. Takeshi Onamata an archaeologist for the National Institute of Statistics and Geography within Mexico, recently made an astonishing discovery in a most unlikely of ways. Before modern technologies, the only real way to investigate an ancient site was to visit the area and either excavate specific places of interest or simply observing said sites from the ground level. However, thanks to modern radar and LIDAR systems, the sites can now be scanned and then observed in depth from afar. However, to implement such technologies on a certain site of interest is incredibly expensive, something Takeshi knows all too well. After investing $62,000 on a LiDAR scan of an area a mere 35 miles in size, he unfortunately returned no new discoveries in the area. This initially disappointed Takeshi. But a few months later, after researching previous investigations in the area, he was incredibly excited when he came across a previous LIDAR scan, one originally made by Mexican official studies of the area. He found a treasure trove available for free online. Published in 2011, it covered an astonishing 4,440 mile square and covers the areas of Tabasco and Chiapas, in which Takeshi has since discovered an additional set of 27 ancient ruins, all previously hidden within this public access map. This not only expands our understanding of these claimed Mayan ruins, but also expands the breadth of this astonishing, now lost civilization's reach, and indeed, the original size of their mega metropolis, which covers many hundreds of miles square and is now estimated to have once been inhabited by at least 10 million individuals. Takeshi learned about the map via Rodrigo Liendo, an archaeologist from the National Autonomous University of Mexico. The ruin stood out to Inomata immediately, and now, thanks to his work, we have a number of once lost but now found ruins, all of which demand further exploration if we are ever to unravel the mysteries of our past. We can see a much better picture of the entire society, Takeshi told the media. The stuff he is finding is crucial for our understanding of how Mayan civilizations developed, added Arlen Chase, an archaeologist at Pomona College. We will keep you posted on any further developments regarding these new discoveries, especially any future excavations. It is a find, a lost civilization, and indeed, an area of archaeological interest and intrigue, which we find highly compelling. The legend of an underworld, or the inner earth, 
have abound historical literature and ancient belief systems, with some more serious believers in this theory who, although with nefarious intention, spent considerable funds in the pursuit of the gateway to this realm. Archaeological documentation of its existence is found throughout the ages, seemingly adding validity no matter how hard to believe it persuaded said group's greatest minds into the pursuit of its existence. Within antiquity, specifically Greek, ancient Egyptian belief systems, a gateway to an underworld, was at the time commonly associated with a passageway into hell and the passage through. Representative of these acts include Hades, Osiris, Anubis, etc., with the Greeks even creating necropolises, claiming gateways were often located at the meeting of three rivers. Journey through the underworld With the Egyptian scripture, we feel not only being the most elaborately constructed, but by that measure the most intriguing to explore. Throughout the underworld journey, the traveler contended with strange beings and gatekeepers, with Osiris found within the Hall of Final Judgment, here the plea of case for entry into the afterlife. The Final Judgment involved a two-part process. Standing before the 42 divine judges. Here they stood before 42 divine judges and pleaded their innocence of any wrongdoing during their lifetime. Part 2. The Weighing of the Heart Ceremony The heart which contained a record of all the deceased's actions in life, was weighed against the feather of the goddess Ma'at. This feather was the symbol for truth and justice, and helped determine whether the deceased person had indeed been virtuous. The afterlife. Known as life in the field of rushes, a reflection of the real world perfected. Blue skies, rivers, and boats for travel gods and goddesses to worship, and fields and crops to be plowed and harvested. The dead were granted a plot of land in the field of rushes and were expected to maintain it. However, other theories arose over the years, these far more commonly connected to the posit of inner earth theory, with portal into the center of our planet, one in which advanced beings dwell. Probably the most famous of ventures and eventual retreats who attempted to find this portal within Antarctica. Curiously, now, not only believed by the Americans, but also the Nazis as the location of the portal. Reportedly encountered craft of incredibly advanced capabilities. But there were also other attempts, more covert, only partly declassified over the years showing an intense interest in this same area by the Third Reich, who, while in power during the Second World War, initiating a number of expeditions whose results still remain closely guarded secrets. Many have died or mysteriously vanished without a trace, looking for this elusive portal's validity, now believed to be positioned in one of the most inhospitable geographical locations on Earth. Yet its belief throughout history is undeniable, and as such is a theory which we find highly compelling. There are many ancient stories derived from religious texts, which, when taken literally, are simply illogical, easily disproven as that of a symbolic nature rather than literal documentation of true events. However, there are a rare few contested as literal truth, and a handful of these for good reason. The conviction is that these events left such a lasting impression on the creators of these texts and ancient scrolls that they included them within their writings. One of these being that of the so-called legend of the Tower of Babel. Once declared as a symbol of oppression, it is now argued by many as simply being merely another symbolic myth, such as many other stories found within religious writings. However, there are numerous details which cannot escape the microscope of some investigators. And now that a brick has been found, legitimately dated to this time, 
and commissioned by the same claimed king, the argument for the actual past existence of this incredible structure has gained traction within even the most skeptical academic mind. A brick stamped with the seal of the ancient Babylonian King Nebuchadnezzar II, biblically stated as the man who commissioned the construction of the tower itself has been discovered. Dr. Irving Finkel of the British Museum said, quote, When you look at the early chapters of the Bible, it is clear that some of it is drawn from the Judeans' own records. It incorporates narratives which they must have encountered for the first time in Babylon, some so powerful and striking that the authors who worked on the Hebrew texts incorporated them to tell their own story. He continued, In the book of Genesis, what we have here is a brick which fits exactly into that specific context. There can be no doubt that the stimulus for the story and the narrative must have taken shape during the Babylonian exile. The evidence could help to prove the existence of the Tower of Babel, its story written by a desperate population in exile held captive by a ruthless king." End quote. Yet, as always, regardless of the corroborating evidence, it will, like the many other details and aspects of the claimed tower, continue to encounter dismissal by many. With even those who are convinced of its past existence in disagreement over its original location, logic would suggest that if built, it was within ancient Babylonia, some 500 miles from Jerusalem. Yet some argue it was actually built somewhere else, within the Middle East. Regardless of these disagreements, we find the brick, its still intact mortar, Dr. Finkel's quotations, and indeed, its intriguing seal, highly compelling.